welcome everyone to the Ice House Podcast. Today I am with Mark Lee Grove, who is the owner manager of Collision Connect, uh, and also has done our owner manager program, which yep. is cool. Yep. Um, and we are at his what do you call this again? It's our tow yard. Tow yard, yeah. Yep. yeah. And it's quite it's very, very cool. A tow yard. <laughs> and I know you've got lots of sites um, across Huntley, Cambridge. We're in Hamilton right now, which yep. is cool. Uh, but yeah, just wanted to have a conversation about your business owner journey. So thanks for being on the podcast. No worries. Thanks cool. for having me. It's cool. Quick fire is how we like to start things. So yep. first question, book or podcast that you recommend? Um, I actually love the Joe Rogan podcast because yeah. I'm a cheesy bloke. Uh, I reckon they're really cool. But good to great. I've read it probably about four times now. Yeah. I really, really like it. Yeah. Awesome. Colin. Four times. That's great. Yeah. By read, I mean listen to because I audiobook. Like, yeah. I'm real dyslexic. So yeah. Yeah. I'll just go to sleep if I'm physically reading it. Yeah. We can relate on that. <laughs> Couple <laughs> words you could, would use to describe yourself. Um, so I think I'm shy and like reserved, but I absolutely know I'm not, but that's just how I feel. Yeah. Um, but no shy but confident like mm. i like to know, i know what i can do but i feel like yeah yeah i get a little that. bit reserved but yeah yeah totally yeah when are you most relaxed um at home with my kid when he's behaving <laughs> like, crucial. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, absolutely crucial yeah. Right? but yeah just just enjoying a bit of quiet time and stuff and everything else is going well like business yeah. and all that sort of stuff too yeah, yeah, yeah. cool coffee order Oh, if I'm being good, short black with a sweetener. Um, if I'm not, oat milk latte with sugar. Nice. <laughs> yeah. First ever job. I was a sweeper boy at a place called Marshall Transmissions, which is like they fix transmissions in cars. Yeah. And I wanted to be a mechanic when I when I was school, so I think I was about fourteen years old, just turned fifteen. And, you know, turn up to sweep their floors every night, and mm-hmm. I would actually like rub up on the hoists to get greasy. Because like, I wanted to look like I worked on the cars as a kid, so I still just think that every is room. so cool. <laughs> I still remember a tradesman being like, "You sweep our floors. How do you get so dirty?" Yeah. <laughs> and we'd have been, I don't know. <laughs> no idea. Yeah. Don't look at me. Don't look at the cameras. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, hundred yeah. percent. That's awesome. Quite smart of you to do something in the industry you wanted to be in. Too. Yeah, yeah. Well, I thought I knew everything when I left school, and that I definitely wanted to. Yeah. I knew I wanted to be a mechanic, and I did that for about a year, and I hated it. I hated having grease under my nails and yeah. all that sort of stuff. So, yeah. Oh, so funny. Room of five or a hundred people. Five. Yeah. Yeah. Good. Definitely depends on the people. Yeah. But like, yeah. I'd way rather be around just five people that we can sort and actually get to know each other rather than like I mean, you go to these big networking yeah. events where it's a hundred people and you're like I might meet one person and it's just awkward you go up to like a room and you're like so what do you do yeah like, you know, it's, I'd way rather have five people that can sit and conversate together good call good call okay um I love those answers it was great I would love if you could just tell us a little bit about yourself what comes up when I ask the question who is Mark uh, um really now I'm a father and a business owner yeah. and that's me but before like I've and I'm a tradesman. I, I, I've done an automotive refinishing apprenticeship, which is car painting in layman's terms, but we call it refinishing because it sounds cool. Um, <laughs> but it is like it's, it's very technical these days. And I, even yeah. when I did my apprenticeship, it was still quite technical, and it's even more technical now. Mm. Um, but yeah, so I'm, I'm a tradie at heart, really. Yeah. It's still like all tradie stuff, and yeah, just sort of moved over onto more entrepreneurial business cool. stuff. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Nice. And yeah, that career journey, you you know, you said you kind of knew what you wanted to do yeah. and then you decided you didn't know what you wanted to do. How did the, how has your career journey looked like and then how did it lead to starting something of your own? So I, yeah, do, doing an apprenticeship and working through a few places in, in Hamilton and the Waikato and then moved to Australia where yeah. I was, um, yeah, again, car painting and learning a few techniques that they didn't really use in New Zealand. Like New Zealand uh, traditionally has been well, up until recently was quite far behind the rest of the world in terms of even like business strategy and mm. you know the technologies that people used especially in our industry it was you know sort of five ten years behind some of the european sites where they what they were doing probably primarily because of like work volumes and things mm. but so then i went to europe as well and worked in a few panel paint shops over there but also uh, when i worked in a cocktail bar and yeah so they help run a hostel and stuff like that that you do when you're backpacking yeah. um came home back into the trade uh, i was managing a site and got offered a, a job to go be a manager of a bigger site and at that point this was in Huntley and talking to the owner at the time he's asking what I want to do and I sort of said ah, I might buy my own shop at some point and he said well why don't you buy this one now mm. and then yeah, about eight weeks later we had a signed uh, wow. sale and purchase agreement and 
just jumped in. So we had a year's, year's uh, handover, which was probably too long. Yeah. But yeah. Um, I also had a lot to learn in that 12 months too, because I was running the shop fine, knew nothing about running a business. Yeah, so, wow. Well. Yeah, yeah. Wow, that's a quick decision. Yeah. You sleep on it and go, yeah, this is me. Oh, I rang my dad and he goes, oh, do you really want to do that now? And I kind of went, fuck you. Yeah, <laughs> I was yeah. like, yeah, right then. Yeah, I do. Like, yeah. absolutely. Yeah, yeah. And, my, and my dad's the most supportive person of me, me in the world. Yeah. And that was like their reaction. So I was like, hmm. Yeah. I was like, well, well now, now I definitely do. Yeah. So, you know, yeah, I was like, so. Cool. And no regrets? No regrets. Awesome, no, I, I love how it. confidently you said that. Yeah, yeah. That is really good. I was actually planning to go from Australia to Paris without using an aeroplane, and that was, if I didn't buy a business, I would have gone away and travelled and done that. Wow. So when it gets really, really hard, I go, should have gone to Paris. Yeah, 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 <laughs> like, that's the line. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm, so good. So. Uh, good on you. Okay, this question I love asking. What's one thing you wish you knew before you began Collision Connect? Oh. Or, or took over the business. Um, <laughs> yeah, there's a there's a few things. I wish I had more um, sort of financial knowledge around like reading my P and Ls and understanding what bank covenants are. Like I knew I had them, but I didn't know what they were. Yeah, like, you yeah. Know, and like all, all of these things that like I guess you you do learn if you go to business school and stuff. But I guess a lot of SMEs aren't made that way. Yeah. Um, and I definitely wasn't told about them my, my bank told me I had these things but I was like how do I measure that and they'll ask you again yeah well, and so like it wasn't yeah yeah there, there's not there's a whole lot of learnings that you do need when you go into business especially if you want to grow and be successful and stuff like that so mm. I wish I knew what questions I needed to ask mm. but I didn't know what questions I needed to ask to find out the answers that I needed that's a really good answer needing to know the questions to ask yeah, yeah. and that's yeah. why I got out of OMB awesome like, I think I said that on my little slip I was like I now know what I need to ask and who I need to ask yeah which is like knowledge is power you know and that's exactly what that yeah. is yeah. and I don't need to know everything like mm. there's so many experts to do so they, they're experts in that like I'll repair your car fantastically and quickly yeah but I don't know about lots of other stuff like this one we have a, a CFO who comes in and does CFO things yeah you know because yeah. she's an expert at that and she's brilliant at it awesome you know? so I ask her the questions and go can I make this work and she goes no and yeah go, tell me how I can you yeah, know? yeah yeah so that kind of stuff and whereas before I would have been like let's go all in and then go yeah. ah <laughs> <You know? laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> now we need to make this work so, <laughs> yeah yeah totally yeah. makes sense it's good um what's been your biggest challenge within the business and how did you overcome it um learning to manage people yeah. Um, I was naturally quite a people person anyway, but having to have the hard conversations with people. Yeah. So, um, especially because I bought the company that I was working in, I was everyone's mate, and I had to go from mate to manager, yes. which was, it's still a tough transition sometimes. Um, I now have a business partner, and he's better at those conversations than I am again, but you still have to have those hard conversations. And I've also found that people respect you when you have that conversation. Yeah. like. Don't pussyfoot around there. If someone's not doing something right, tell them you're not doing this right. Yeah. This is what we need you to do. And they generally go, ah, oh, yeah, sorry, man. Yeah. Like, you know, it's, yeah. And, and, and you feel better for it too, because otherwise you sit there in a ball of anxiety being yeah. like, oh, he's not performing. Oh, yeah. how, do, how can I help you? How can I, you know, should I do this with you? No, you tell them that they're not doing their job and this is what's expected of them. Yeah. But, you know, and if they can't do it, then they can ask. Well, this is what I need this you know and I have that conversation but if you don't have the hard conversation to start with mm. you're never going to get there yeah absolutely great answer yeah that's cool highlight moment in the journey on the other side of that um actually it came like the other day I was just scrolling through Instagram and one of my um, painters who had been he was actually my apprentice when before I bought the company mm-hmm. I was just scrolling through and he had a, a picture that he'd set up on his phone of him in the spray booth and it just said love my job Awesome. And I was like, that's so cool. Like, that's, you know, nothing that we like, tried to push through, anything like that. It's just yeah. someone who's, like, telling his friends and family, like, this is such a cool place to be. Yes. You know, that, was, that was, yeah, one of my biggest highlights. That's so cool to hear because it's authentic. Like, yeah. like you said, you haven't said, in, sent an email around being like, hey, guys, if you could do a post <laughs> on your gram. <laughs> exactly, yeah. Uh, saying how much you like work, that'd be real good for my morale. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 exactly. Build me up, please. Yeah, you know? but yeah. it just happened because he means it. Yeah, um, yeah. And I think people sharing with their family and friends is like the biggest, you know, what you put on your Instagram is like, it's a highlight reel, right? So yeah, yeah. It's like, it's like saying, this is a highlight. I'm enjoying doing that. Yeah, Very cool. Yeah. I like that. Yeah. What keeps you going personally and motivates you every day? Um, 
I just get excited about business stuff and opportunity. And I, uh, my business partner Aaron, him and I work very, very well together. Great. Um, we're talking G's too. Like he's very organised and OCD about the way things are laid out and very process orientated. And I love process. Mm. Hate implementing it. Yeah. And I'm not very good at sticking to it. Yeah. So I don't like that's. You know, we'll put something in place, and Aaron's very good at like tuning it out, <laughs> yeah. everything like that. But I'm definitely more of the upfront mm-hmm. idea stuff, and I yeah love thinking five years ahead and big picture and Great. all this sort of stuff. And then the other part is then like motivating the team and seeing the team just go like we have a goal of X amount of cars per week, and then when they hit that, I'm like yeah that's cool. Well, mm-hmm. well now we're another two. Let's see what we can how yeah. can we work out to get these mixed more in, and you know seeing them do that is really cool. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Do you have you found that you enjoy the business strategy side of it more than the the practical fixing of the cars now? Absolutely. Yeah. Yep. When did yep. that switch? I actually couldn't tell you. Probably during OMP. Like I, I still like like um, mm-hmm. we we changed our um, our paint system and we put the, there was they were teaching the guys how to use the new stuff and I was like, ah, oh, give it a let me have a go on it. Yeah. went and I painted the car and it looked awesome I was like yeah still got it like yeah, it was yeah, such an awesome good. like bit of, bit of satisfaction came out of it yeah but no I I love seeing us create targets and smash them and yeah. then go again and be like well cool if we could do that this month what could we change and then make it x you know mm-hmm. yeah, yeah yeah I really love that yeah and I, I like networking stuff like I'm definitely a people person even though I've described myself as like a little bit shy and reserved mm. I know I'm not that person mm. so and I enjoy getting out and talking yeah. to people yeah networking and it's cool to hear that your connection with your business partner is so uh, balanced so well. Yeah. That, you know, your strengths and weaknesses, you know, bounce off each other. Yeah, In exactly. that way, that's so important. It is r- real important. And I bought into the company last year. Mm-hmm. And I'd been talking about, even with um, my accountant, who, and Nathan Maisie, who was my business mentor for a while, and still continues to be, um, I talked to him about wanting to get a business partner in and who I, who I could partner with and stuff like that. Because it's... Carrying the load by yourself is hard. Yeah. Like, and even like you'll go home and talk to your partner or your mm-hmm. wife, and it's still not the same. Like yeah. they, unless they 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 co own it too and they work in it as well, it's not the same. And yeah. it's you know they don't understand the stresses and and then also don't enjoy the wins as well. Yeah. So yeah. like yeah, having someone else who's in it working with you. Yeah. And gets excited about the same things and gets annoyed about the same things too. Yeah. It's yeah you're sharing the journey with someone and it's it's a lot better. Yeah. yeah. Cool. That's cool to hear yeah. that you enjoy doing with a business partner because it can go both ways. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. yeah exactly. Yeah. 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 Um. What advice would you give someone wanting to start a business right now? Um. Just be confident. Like if you've got an idea that you want to do, just go for it. Like mm-hmm. especially if they're you know, younger people that want to get in. Like I'm. 30 I mean, we quite often hear like why are you guys you know you're crazy going and getting a, a, another shop and this one's like man I'm 30 years old or actually I'm 31 yeah. but it fails it doesn't matter I've got the rest of my life to yeah. make it look like it obviously matters but you know you, yeah. you learn from failures and stuff and you're never going to learn if you don't do it so just yeah. do it Yeah. give it a go yeah. yeah and it's so much better than the feeling of going oh what if or I should have done this 100% you know yeah. at least yeah. you can look back at your life now and go yep yeah, did it yeah, Gave exactly. It That's it, hundred percent. We've all gone. Ah, I wish I did this, or which I wish I should have gone to Paris, or whatever, yeah, yeah, whatever yeah. it may be. But like, yeah, just and if you do it, go all in. Don't like only do like yeah. half pie, one foot in, because it's never going to succeed if you're not like hundred yeah. percent on it. Yeah, great advice. Yeah. Really good advice. When did you first hear of the ice house, and was anything holding you back before you made the decision to do the owner manager program? Um, I heard of the ice house through I think it was through BNZ. Yep. And I was talking because I wanted to do a sales skills course because that's, again, what I didn't, the things that I didn't know how to do, like I mm. didn't know as I could be good at selling or like where you even start to look at that sort of stuff. And I went on your sales school program, I think it was Derek that took the mm-hmm. took the course and the guy who I was sitting next to had just finished his own manager program. Cool. His name was Carl Sale. And um, we had a chat for the couple of days that were on there. And then I asked about it, and I think Maurice had already contacted me about the owner manager program, but I wasn't sure. And um, then he said he's like, "It's the best thing I've ever done." Wow. And I think, ah, oh, just do it. Yeah. 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 Cool. Yeah, and it's it is the best thing I've ever done. Wow. Yeah, yeah. It changed me as a business. It took me from a tradesman to a businessman. It's the uh, yeah. It's uh, I could run a workshop before now I can run a business. Wow. Okay. Yeah, that's really cool to hear. Mm. I love that. Yeah, what changes did you implement? to your business from from doing the program 
oh so many we, we changed our brand as one of them like it was Peden's Collision Repair before that was the, the company that I purchased so oh. we then decided we wanted to go out and expand and knew that well one like because we started in Huntley our market was limited so like our and in our industry our like our net profits are limited like they're basically our, our we're cost takers we don't you know we don't give prices we get set prices that we then go do the work and you put your throughput through to yes. your bottom line kind of thing so if we wanted to grow that bottom line we need to get more revenue if we couldn't grow until the town grew so then we had to grow somewhere else yeah. and decided that Peden's while it was very very well known in Hundley wasn't known anywhere else so yeah. why not create something that's ours and then we can then grow from there so that's where the sort of connect group came from and Collision Connect and we have the Connect Towing as well now and Oh. Yeah. And so that things. came from owner manager program being yeah. like, yeah, it's time for me to rebrand and Yeah, have something that that's ours that we're like I think someone said they're like, Well if you're not truly in love with it, why are you doing it? Yeah, yeah. And I was like, oh, I'm not truly in love with this. Like, it's just someone else's last name. There was also yeah. a Peden's towing was already out there, so they couldn't have that and it was the guy's last name as well and all this yeah. sort of stuff. Like we probably could have I don't know, put a put a trademark or paint or whatever it is on the yeah. on the name and then bullied them out of using it, but that's not very nice and that's not who I am. Yeah. So, you know, see if we say, right, we'll start afresh and make something that's us. Yeah. Uh, and Good. we're stoked. Yeah. Good on you, yeah. It's really cool and clean design, like yeah. real yeah, really clearly communicated. I really like it. Yeah. 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 And the, the other part is like really focusing on the culture at work. We've always had quite a good culture, but actually putting in the effort to mm-hmm. work on the culture constantly. So we have lots more reviews with our guys uh, we do surveys about the staff and they give us very very honest feedback on what they think of us and how the shops are managing how they're running cool. problems they're facing it's all anonymous too so they can be as harsh as they want and they're not going to get fired yeah yeah um, as much as i want to find out who they are i can't yeah. <laughs> it doesn't matter yeah. um That's but yeah it did, did like open up a door for them to be brutally honest if they if they wanted to be yeah. but we also got some really really good feedback out of it and being able to implement some of the stuff that they've said hey look this is a problem we go oh well you actually didn't know that was a problem so now we can work on changing it and then that again builds a culture too so they're oh they're actually listening to us yeah they're you actually know? making a change yeah, yeah. exactly yep yep mm. and um yeah it really worked well so, so cool. great that's great anything that you implemented and changed into your lifestyle or not so much? um definitely reading more or cool. listening to audiobooks more yeah um the part that i said in omp that i didn't like it was more like the resilient stuff around like mm. your own personal growth and stuff and like i think if i did that now mm. i'd be way more into it yeah, yeah but i yeah. think it's because i was also still so new on my business journey that i was like oh, that stuff can wait yeah, you know? yeah. But now i see how like, important it is to totally. to do it like you know making, going to the gym in the morning doing um, i took up mma and i started that's right. training for that and like now that's my meditation you know and i realized like now if i don't do that i don't make as good decisions during the day and all those sort of things there's no point being strung out at work for 14 hours yeah. when you could go there for 10 hours go for a walk with your kid and go to the gym mm. you're still going to get the same amount done yeah you know, you're just not going to be pulling your hair out for that extra four yeah and so, so true. yeah look after yourself first because you're not going to look after your company otherwise yeah, yeah. <laughs> absolutely gold i love it did the program hit your expectations like yeah what were you expecting going in and and going back to that question of did anything hold you back like going like I don't know I'm not not big enough for this or yeah. I'm not good enough as a human bit you know like yeah, yeah, yeah. I've heard all of those before so it's, one of the things I was like I, and I still get it now is like imposter syndrome yeah like I remember when they said like that you're in this this is your OMP thing they sent out the email with everyone and I stalked everyone's email and Jason chucked them into Google and seeing us and I was like wow look at these businesses these are crazy I was like I just fix cars Wow. Uh, you know, and that was my thing. But there was also uh, another panel on paint shop, and now one, and he's he had an awesome shop, and I actually knew him as well. We're in, we're in a um, group together with our paint companies, and so then I was like, oh, but, you know, maybe I maybe I can come in here. But yeah, still then like talking mm-hmm. to the other the other businesses and seeing some of them that are you know huge, like multi 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 million dollar businesses, you know. And I was like, far out, mm-hmm. look at this. But you know, I was two years into it where these other guys are 10, 15, I'm like, oh, you know, when I'm there, I'm, I'm going to be there anyway. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. definitely, I was, yeah, had a lot of anxiety about whether I fit in there, and especially because I'd never done, you know, I left school when I was 15. Wow. I didn't, wow. yeah, I didn't do any sort of mm. university training or even any sort of wind tech or anything like that. I just went into working and, mm. yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's a common one that we hear, imposter syndrome. 
Mm. And it's interesting because I hear it with the owners of the $15 million businesses or yeah. 15, you know? And it's like, yeah. wait, you have imposter syndrome? What? Yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah. that doesn't compute, you know? But, but yeah, we, we all do, I think, to an extent, which is why I like sharing that other people do as well. Um, yeah. yeah. So that everyone feels a little bit normal, you know? Especially when you're, like, you're dealing with people who you're like, well, there's like, I don't know, like a the manager of an insurance company or, or something like that. Mm. They're like the big, our big ticket customers and these guys have, you know, Mm. 5,000 people working for them or whatever yeah. and you come in and you're like oh you like fishing too? Yeah. Oh we're the same. Like, yeah, you know, yeah, it's, yeah, exactly. yeah Everyone's just people so like you know as long as you can get along with people it's yeah, it's, yeah we're all the same. So. Yeah for sure. No that's mm. really cool to hear. Um, yeah you have put some stuff on LDP that's right? Yep. yep. Um, so that's our leadership development program for those listening. How did that play out for you and where did you see the value within your key leaders? So we had two very, very different responses yeah, to LDP. Yeah, i to hear this. Yeah. yeah. So um, one was um, our manager. And our, so we put both managers from each site on it. Yeah. Um, our, our manager from Huntley, uh, uh, even almost like changing as a person, like he's more confident. He, you know, he asked me about profit, asked me about our revenue targets. You know, wow. he, he goes through, he understands the business way more, he understands his team way more, mm. and leads them differently than he ever has before, and it was an amazing result for him, and, you know, and probably in a few years' time we'll put him on the, if it's an emer- emerging, uh, LDP, is it? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah he'll yeah. probably go on that in a few right. years' yeah, time, yeah. you know? Yeah. Um, the other one realised that he hated our industry, <laughs> no longer wanted to be in it, and handed in his notice. Yeah. So, but it's also a fantastic result because we yeah. don't want him to spend the next twelve months with us realising he hates the industry. Yeah. Not putting in the performances that he should, mm. and then potentially losing us, you know, whatever hundreds of thousands of dollars by not performing in his role, especially as a manager. Yeah. So, also a very cheap way to get someone to leave. Yeah. You know, and, and he's doing something he really likes now, and we wish him all the best. Yeah. You know, that's. Yeah, if he's found something that's good for him, perfect. Because and now we have a new manager in that shop, and he's awesome. Mm. Yeah, you know, and he fits in with the guys well, and he will eventually do that program too. But he's yeah, yeah just doing fantastically. So yeah. it's how cool is that? Because I think people would look at that and think that's a negative thing, but actually yeah. it's such a win yeah. long term. A lot of lost headache for you essentially. 100%. Yeah. 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 Mm. Yeah, yeah. 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 Like yeah, it's it's the best helping someone to realise that they're. Either this is for them or yeah. this isn't. Is they're both great results, mm. you know. So that's yeah, it was a win for us. Yeah, cool. Absolutely. That's, that's really good to hear. What value does community hold for you, and how are you choosing to stay connected <coughs> to the Ice House community post your program? I think it's cool being able to just tap into all other businesses. One thing that I did, uh, gentlemen, when we first got the, the the roadside contract that we hold for our towing. Company I put on the Ice House Central, I was like, does anyone own a towing company? That's because right. Because we are just, well, I was like, we've had one, but we, it's not, a, we, it's just a little business on the side. Like, it's never had to run on its own. And now it's, you know, we, I think we 6x its revenue last year. Mm, so, wow. and then went from just a little side business to a fully fledged operating business under its own steam, doesn't need the mm. panel shops. And it went, shit, what do we, how do we do this? Like, <laughs> yeah. now I can repair cars all day, but this was definitely different. So, yeah, I reached out to, um, Stuart from Parks Towing. Yeah. Had, had a couple of chats with him. Um, and, uh, you know, once we're, I guess, less chaotic, I would like to go down and, and have a look. And he, he said, yeah, he's very welcome to having us down there and seeing what they do because they obviously have a very impressive operation too. Yeah. But then the other stuff is like so just cool. talking to other business owners that are, we all have the same problems. Like, um, you know, uh, Carrie from EAS, like we're, we're very close now. And, you know, just, just other people that are, that are in the area and, you know, not necessarily just to do business with each other either. Like when you do, hey, that that's great from your community too. But it's more helping each other grow your businesses. Yeah. yeah. And then the other part is for me, like everyone has fleets. You know, mm. so like a lot of these guys have, some companies have fifty vehicles. You know, and like although I could do them mm. when they yeah. end my up, I'm there to do it too. And then vice versa, if I see something that we need that I know this guy does, I can just call them. You know, yeah. and go, hey, I know you're this business, can you fix this for us? Yeah. You know, and that's that's where it's that's good as well. Yeah, hundred yeah. percent. All that stuff makes my heart so happy because yeah. um one, I love 
well, the biggest thing really is I love seeing alumni help each other out mm. and then ultimately do business together too. Yeah. Um, but that situation where you were like, um, help, like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then Stu, who was, you know, connecting the mobile and it's like, cool, yeah. now, like, everyone's so, so keen to help each other out. Yeah. And so it's just that connecting piece. Yeah. And then you're away, you know, and you've got someone that you can bounce ideas off if you need to and that's gold, essentially. It so, is, yeah, yeah. Yeah, love hearing that. Mm. That's really cool. Um, one person that has been influential in your business journey. Yeah. Nathan Maisie from Maisie Harris Co. So he's my accountant from day dot. They also do a lot of business mentoring and all that sort of stuff. So from a guy who knew nothing about business, like mm. I actually did do very well in accounting at school, and I probably some of them like, man, I should have been an accountant. <laughs> but um, yeah, so and, and you know we we sit down and do business planning sessions with them and. He's been yeah just a really good mentor mm. from a business sense, and we've now become friends outside of that as well. Mm. But yeah, he's really sort of pushed us to do things that that we can do, you know. Mm. So yeah, that's yeah. and when things aren't going well, he goes, "This isn't going good. Yeah, this is what you need to sort out." Yeah, okay, oh, straight. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It doesn't just sort of. Push. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yep, yep. Cool. Yeah. Which is what you need as a business owner too. Yep. You don't want someone to be like, "Oh, hey, like this isn't looking great." You go, "This is rubbish," mm. and you need to sort it out. Otherwise, it's not going to be good. You yeah. Go, oh, thank you. Yeah, yeah. Good. Yeah. Old, good yeah. Old and you don't want to have it once a year either. You need to have it yeah. quarterly. Yeah. yeah. Which is what yeah, yeah he's done. So and uh, we're in the process of setting up a board as well, and he will be probably chairing the board. So. Wow. Yeah. Cool. Mm. Yeah, it's so cool. Cool that you've created a connection outside of that too. Yeah. Um, but yeah, someone that can wear different hats and you know exactly. With you. Yeah. yeah, 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 and like he works in very well with our, our CFO too. So like, it was also from a different accounting firm, but mm. you know they they work very well together and they come in, which is you know sometimes that could not work as well, especially like they're competitors ish. Mm. But no, they work so well together and they both care about our business and they go, alright, cool. How do we help these guys? Mm. You know, it's cool. Yeah, yeah. totally. Mm. Um, something I know has happened in your world that I want to touch on, yeah. if that's okay. Uh, and when you talked about the resilience side of things, I'm sure this has grown your resilience in a big way. Yes. Uh, but can you let us know a little bit about the fire that happened at yep. your site? Yeah. And what happened there and then how you overcame that situation? Because that's just pure resilience right there. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, um, yeah, we had, we had a fire in our, in our Huntley site, so we were doing some maintenance on our spray booth and it was just a, a freak accident that mm. it caught fire we've done everything possible to mitigate that but, uh, um, yeah. and the damage was limited to, to the spray booth because we had, we had done all that but um, nevertheless it mm. happened and I, I got a call it was only a couple of weeks after we opened Cambridge too that I got a call when I was in Cambridge being like there's four fire engines here you need to get in now oh my god like, so yeah it was, pre- it was pretty bad mm. um, uh, the for people who don't know, a spray booth is an integral part to a panel and paint shop. It's yep. where all the painting happens. Yep. Um, and we only have one on each site, so it basically meant that site was out of action for any sort of painting services for until we got a new booth. Mm. So, yep, claimed insurance, done all that, basically got the team together. Unfortunately, had to let a couple guys go at yeah. that point. Um, that just is what it is. You can't. You yeah. can't do, do everything for, for everybody and the, the business as a whole needed to survive. Um, we, yeah, definitely had insurance, had coverage, learned a lot about that type of insurance claiming, which is mm. um, sometimes doesn't cover everything that you think it does cover and covers material damage and loss of income, but something for us it didn't cover a whole lot of uh, extra labour that our guys had to do to get vehicles ready for transport to then move over to the other site to get painted. So. There was a big, yes, a big variance course. in what insurance <laughs> paid us um, in comparative to our losses that we made. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, it was tough, real tough year. Um, it's been nine months until we got a booth. So a fire happened in wow. April and our booth was uh, put in in December. Um, we had issues up until April with our booth and actually even last week a regulator, gas regulator, burst and they couldn't find it. Well, not burst, but broke yeah and uh, they couldn't find the tool to get it fixed so we had to get another one and that was down for a week so again it's just yeah lots of headaches but yeah. you know we, we also got through and it was also in that year that we put the guy on the leadership development program wow. to, to make sure that he was being able to lead these guys through what was a really hard year mm. um extremely 
stressful. Yeah. Um, yeah, very, very stressful. And like, obviously made huge losses. Like we had two shops overheads with one shop's production. Mm. So in, in amongst that, we still managed to increase our revenue by 50% oh. over that year. But again, a lot of work. A lot of work, yeah. yeah. And also revenue doesn't equate to profit. No. So, yeah. But it was also good that we did that because we sort of mitigated some of the losses that we made, even though the losses we made are still huge. Yeah. And we'll spend the next sort of 12 months recovering, mm. but we're still going to recover. You know, yeah. so it's, you know, as long as you know when, when it's happening, you're like, right, this year is basically a write-off. Yeah. So what are we going to do to mitigate those those losses and, and work from there? And like, it's just, again, if we didn't have the team that we put in or the culture, um, in both sites, uh, the management processes that we had, mm. um, again, lots of our stuff is online, so all of our computer systems are cloud-based, so Great. literally anywhere we can look at a job and make adjustments that we need to and go ahead, so yeah, and as long as like, our insurance partners were really helpful, talking to our suppliers and having to get extra long lines of credit and that kind of stuff, um, yeah, otherwise we wouldn't have, wouldn't have got through, so yeah. <sighs> It's heavy stuff, like, because it yep. is a lot to mentally cope with. Yeah, yeah. How did you personally cope with it? Was it just the, the, the team, you know? Yeah, oh, there was a lot. I didn't probably didn't cope that well, looking back at it now. Yeah. Um, yeah, buried my head in the computer. I actually, this year, got my team in Huntley together, which is where the, the fire was, and apologised to them. Wow. Because, like, I didn't picture how hard it was on them. Mm. I knew it was hard on me, and I didn't share how hard it was with anyone. Well, I did my business partner, but not as much like with the team. And I just like, you guys only have to do this. And to me, that was all they had to do. And I was yeah. like, oh, it's just your job, just do it. But yeah. that's not the case. Like, it was stressful on them too. They could see that, like, you know, things weren't going well and that they were wrapping out cars to go on a truck to get painted somewhere else and that things were hard. Yeah. And I didn't share, let them share that load with me. Mm. So that was the big learning curve. Um, the other part as well was making sure your bank understands what's going on. Unfortunately, we had a bank manager who we did not have a good relationship with, mm. and it did not go well. Yeah. And the bank have since said, like, hey, look, we should have been able to support you in this part, and we didn't, but that's yeah. done, it's done, it doesn't matter, you know, it doesn't matter now saying sorry. Yeah. So, yeah, totally. yeah. And, and I should have known to push more as well, but, mm. you know, sometimes banks are scary people, yeah. and you don't want to, but, like, whereas now I would be like, no, no, you can get your boss. Yeah. Um, your boss, you know. Yeah, totally. So, yeah, it's just make sure you have the, the right people helping you. There we had great people on our insurance side that were helping us on that side, but the other side we needed as well. Mm. But, yeah, having the confidence to go into and say, well, if you're not helping me, I'm going to get someone else to. Mm. You know, which is, again, when you've got all the other stuff going on, it's a hard conversation to have. Yeah. But, yeah, just having to do them. And yeah. Yeah. Hard conversations, not easy. All of them. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And, yeah, and yeah, yeah, just hard conversations with, with everyone and like with our insurance customers too. So they were great. Mm. They were, we were and said, hey, look, we've had a fire. They said, how can we help? And I said, just keep the work coming in. Yeah. And they did. Yeah. They kept giving us referrals, kept pushing all the, the crashes that they could through us. And it was fantastic. Because if they didn't do that, we wouldn't have any customers. Yeah. So, you know, and they, they knew that the lead times were going to be longer and it wasn't going to be as good a service, but. Again, they want us to be on the other side at the end. You know, they, yeah, they still wow. want us to be able to repair the vehicles when we are up and running. So they were real good. One said, I hope you're not insured with us when they said we're going to fire. So which was <laughs> <laughs> kind of funny, but I was like, thanks, mate. Yeah, yeah you're like, that, that, thanks for that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, cool partnership, though, because they obviously had your back for the long term, yep. which, is, which is really good. And also just congrats for getting through the hardest parts of that. Yeah, um, thank you. Yeah. And the resilience it's taken, but, you know, the positive attitude that you have that, Cool. Mm. Well, only up from here, pretty much. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, mm. that's it. Like, yeah, we're we're not here to fail. So yeah, yeah, we're here to grow. I'm and sure lots of business owners can relate relate to that thinking. So um, yeah, yeah, appreciate it. Would love to hear uh, what excites you most about you know the next or well, the future of of your business, and um, yeah, what excites you most about it? Just the growth journey, really. Mm. Like opening up new locations finding the location to buy. The industry is probably hasn't had this big a change in it in my career ever. So we yeah, right. currently have uh, one of the insurers are setting up their own shops only in the main centres for now, but that's really gonna change the dynamic of our industry. Mm. Um, for us that provides opportunity, you know, we're we're a young company trying to grow. Um, there's gonna be a whole lot of people that are just wanting to go, no thank you, our industry is 
traditionally as a as an older industry there yeah so i haven't haven't been too many new shop owners come in the last sort of 10 years so there's going to be a few that are going to be ready for sale which then provides opportunity for us and we would like to then partner with the insurance companies more than what potentially they've had partnerships before mm. and yeah create better relationships but over a bigger scale mm. you know so we we ideally we want to be nationwide we'd like to have a collision connect in you know sort of every center and smaller provincial town and do it that way and yeah, yeah grow exciting. the industry but with our badge on it exciting yeah. surely bay planning next yeah oh, we'll, surely we'll, we'll, we'll wait and see, we'll wait and see. <laughs> <laughs> no thank you so much yeah. um Matt, for just being open and honest and you know sharing your business owner journey yeah i'm sure it's very relatable to many so i appreciate you being on the podcast thank you very much Brian. enjoyed it